हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम बैक टू माई प्ले लिस्ट ऑफ फिजियोलॉजी वी आर डिस्कसिंग स्पेशल सेंसेज और चैप्टर नंबर फिफ्टी थ्री गाइडेंस याज करेंगे विच इज अबाउट द सेंस ऑफ हेयरिंग यानी आप सुनते कैसे हैं दिस चैप्टर डिस्क्राइब्स मैकेनिज्म वेयर बाय द एयर रिसीव द साउंड वेव्स डिस्क्रिमिनेट देयर फ्रिक्वेंसी एंड ट्रांसमिट ऑडिटरी इंफॉर्मेशन टू द सेंट्रल नर्वस सिस्टम वेयर इट्स मीनिंग इज डेसिफर्ड ना दैट्स अ वेरी गुड इंट्रोडक्टरी पैराग्राफ बिकॉज दिस इज परफेक्टली डिस्क्राइबिंग Uh, in a summary in a nutshell what happens when we hear so we have this uh, you know uh, sound waves receiving uh, structure called pinna or the external air yahan sound waves na ke hit karna hai then they travel all the way to uh, the tympanic membrane aur is uh, air waves ki sound waves ki hit ki wajah se yahan jo vibrations hoti hain then the little bones here meleus incus stapes ye sari bones and then the cochlear system ye air waves ki transmission and then through the nerve into the higher centers yani ke brain tak ye information jaati so that's how you actually process uh, the air waves to hear something to humne ye discuss karna hai ke cochlea mein kya uh, you know uthal puthal hota hai sara how does cochlea actually receives the sound waves and then what happens how do they travel to the central nervous system and how are they processed there so in the very beginning of the chapter let me tell you also one thing that this chapter will also talk about a lot of very very dry concepts and uh, some paragraphs that we will be skipping because they are of no use for your clinical practice since it's a textbook it mentions everything but you as a good student and me as a good teacher should be able to discriminate what to study what we can leave and we don't have to study okay so let's start the tympanic membrane first because what they are assuming ke air ki entry into the canal up to the tympanic membrane is a simple phenomena of uh, passage of airway airway just boom gets in there and then it hits the tympanic membrane so they are beginning their story from the tympanic membrane so conduction of the sound from the tympanic membrane to the cochlea is their initial point because what they are trying to understand is uh, the fact ke ye extra, ye to simple bhi hai na yaar it's just a tube yahan pe sound waves ne hit karna hai aur ye air andar chali gayi now the story begins when the tympanic membrane is hit with the sound waves okay and that's a good diagram to show there is that the tympanic membrane and the ossicles which conduct sound from the tympanic membrane through the middle ear to the cochlea so that is the external ear ya outer ear this is the middle ear jisme tympanic membrane hai ye bones bones hai and then we have the inner ear jisme cochlea hai right so middle ear external ear is ne sirf sound waves ne travel karna hai middle ear mein there will be processing of sound waves abhi hum dekhenge kaise and then inner ear mein kafi sari processing honi hai attached to the tympanic membrane is the handle of the malleus this is important information because tympanic membrane ke sath hi ye malleus attached the handle of the malleus is actually attached jaise hi ye membrane hit hoti hai ye diaphragm ki tarah hai dhol dekha aap logo ne dhol shaadi wagera mein dhol bajta na dab 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 ya music mein drums hote hain aajkal bade modern jisme aap dande se usko bajate hain so at the top of the drum is the diaphragm us diaphragm ko jab marte hain to usse sound produce hoti hai because there is a vibration oscillation hoti hai usme bilkul isi tarah jab tympanic membrane pe sound waves hit karti hain so there is to and fro oscillation us oscillation aur us vibration ki wajah se ye jo little bones hain ye hilna julna shuru hoti hain aur malleus directly iske sath attached hai so whenever the malleus moves the incus moves with it as well because incus uske sath lagi hui hai malleus ke sath jab malleus move karegi to incus move karegi simple si baat hai the opposite end of the incus articulate with the stem of the stapes aur phir incus judi hui hai kiske sath stapes ke sath and the face plate of the stapes lies against the membranous labyrinth of the cochlea so ye pura arrangement is tarah hai ki teen bones hain choti choti si malleus incus aur stapes मेलियस जो है वो टिम्पेनिक मेम्ब्रेन के साथ जुड़ी हुई है इनकस मेलियस और स्टेप्स दोनों के साथ जुड़ी हुई है और स्टेप्स जो है एक तरफ इनकस के साथ जुड़ी हुई है और एक तरफ मेम्ब्रेनस लेब्रेंथ के साथ जुड़ी हुई है सो so, यहाँ जो वाइब्रेशन हिट करेगी तो ये बोन हिलेगी इनकस हिलेगी स्टेप्स हिलेगा और वाइब्रेशन ट्रांसफर हो जाएगी इन द मेम्ब्रेनस लेब्रेंथ दैट्स द स्टोरी और जहाँ पर यह वाइब्रेशन ट्रांसफर हो रही है इसको हम नाम देते हैं ओवल विंडो द टिप एंड of the handle of the malleus is attached to the center of the tympanic membrane that's the point that they are talking about this is the tip of the you know handle of the malleus 
and at this point of the attachment is just constantly pulled by the tensor tympani muscle so the bone ka jo part tympanic membrane pe attach ho raha it is continuously pulled by this particular muscle and it keeps the tympanic membrane tensed aur ye tension bahut important hai taki jo sound vibrations hai on any portion of the membrane to be transmitted to the ossicles otherwise agar ye tympanic membrane relax hoti to sound waves lag rahi hai to ye bones ne hilna nahi tha ye टाइट होगी तभी ये बोन्स हिलेंगी आपने अगेन कभी ड्रम देखा है उसके ऊपर ये जो डायफ्राम होता है ये लूज ऐसे पड़ा होता है या बिल्कुल टाइट होता है इट्स वेरी टाइट पुराने जमाने के जो ढोल शादियों वगैरह में भजते थे आई रिमेंबर फ्रॉम माई चाइल्ड हुड घरों में ये डब 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 या साइड्स पे दो डायफ्राम होते थे इधर और इधर एंड द पर्सन इज स्टैंडिंग देयर जो ये ढोल बजा रहा होता था समथिंग लाइक दट्स या मेरी ड्राॅइंग इंप्रूव हुई है नहीं सो दीज डायफ्राम्स यूज टू बी वेरी वेरी टाइट they're not loose aur yahan par bhi aapki jo tympanic membrane hai it's very tight and that tightness is because of the tensor tympani muscle okay the ossicles of the middle ear are suspended by ligaments in such a way that the combined malleus and incus act as a single lever having the fulcrum approximately at the border of the tympanic membrane so they are all hanging with the ligaments as well ye anatomy ka topic pad rakha humne the articulation of the incus with the stapes causes the stapes to push forward on the oval window obviously it will move forward on the oval window on the cochlear fluid on the other side of the window every time the tympanic membrane moves inward so jaise hi tympanic membrane ab dekhiye na ye nature ka system dekhiye aur abhi jaise jaise is chapter mein aage badhenge aap aur dekhenge ki yahan sound waves ne hit kiya isne is dande ko hilaya aur yahan se message andar pahunch gaya kyunki sari bones hilna julna shuru ho gayi okay now ये बड़ा इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट है द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ इम्फेरेंस मैचिंग बाय द ऑसिकुलर सिस्टम नाउ द एम्पलीट्यूड ऑफ द मूवमेंट ऑफ द स्टेपीज फेस प्लेट विद ईच साउंड वाइब्रेशन इज ओनली थ्री फोर्थ एज मच एज द एम्पलीट्यूड ऑफ द हैंडल ऑफ द मेलियस यानी मेलियस जितना जोर से हिलेगा ये उससे कम जोर से हिलेगा ऑल दो मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ द मूवमेंट इज लेस but the force is more that is an important point instead the system actually reduces the distance but it increases the force of movement by about 1.5 or 1.3 times in addition ab iska reason sunay the surface area for the tympanic membrane is big 55 square millimeters whereas the surface area of the stapes is only 3.2 square millimeters that's a 17 fold difference approximately and ये बिल्कुल ऐसे है कि घरों में जब प्लम्बिंग अगर किसी को असूल बताएं कि इफ देर इज अ बिगर पाइप तो वो बिगर पाइप मेन लाइन से तो आ रहा होता है लेकिन जैसे जैसे आपके किचन में लाइन आती है वो छोटा पाइप यूज करते हैं और फिर उस पर टैप लगाते हैं रीजन उसका ये होता है कि बिगर पाइप से जब छोटे पाइप में पानी आएगा तो काफी अच्छे प्रेशर के साथ यहाँ से पानी निकलेगा फ्रॉम द टैप बिल्कुल ऐसे ही फ्रॉम द बिगर एरिया दैट्स अ बिगर मेम्ब्रेन दैट्स अ स्मॉलर एरिया तो जब फ्रॉम द बिगर टू द स्मॉलर फोर्स ट्रांसमिट होती है साउंड वेव्स के हिट की तो वो फोर्स का मैग्नीट्यूड बढ़ता है ओके ऑल दो मैं फिर आपको बता रहा हूं कि ऑसोलेशन कम होती हैं लेकिन फोर्स का मैग्नीट्यूड बढ़ता है ठीक है और राइट सो सो द ट्वेंटी टू टाइम्स एज मच टोटल फोर्स टू बी एक्सर्टेड ऑन द फ्लूड ऑफ द कॉकलिया एज इट इज एक्सर्टेड ऑन द टेम्पैनिक मेम्ब्रेन तो जितनी फोर्स यहाँ लगी थी वो सिग्नल अब एम्पलीफाई हो गया और वो सिम अब यहाँ पे रफली अराउंड ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी टू टाइम्स मोर फोर्स रीच इज द कॉकलिया ओके सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट एंड दिस इज कॉल्ड इज मैचिंग um because fluid has far greater inertia than air does it increase amount of force are necessary to cause vibration in the fluid ab ye jo sara ho raha na i'm getting 20 22 times force bada ye cochlea tak pahunchta pahunchte ye important hai the nature has taken care of each and every detail is cochlea ke andar there is fluid aur is fluid ne hilna hai fluid ne vibrate hona hai fluid ko vibrate karne ke liye zyada force chahiye to yahan air hai air ki vibration mein kam force lagti hai agar yahi kam yani agar main yahan se pura system nikal dun if i remove all this system ye hata de aapke air mein ye hai hi nahi theek hai na tympanic membrane hai na ye bones hai na kuch hai to ye air directly jaake hit karegi cochlea par and let me tell you aapko kuch sunai nahi dega uska reason ye hai kyunki is air air ki jo power aa rahi hai jo sound waves aa rahi hai they are not powerful enough to cause vibration in the cochlea unless somebody is shouting and if there is too much noise then maybe you hear something lekin nature ne ek amplification system rakha hai aur wo amplification system bahut acche se 
effectively काम कर रहा होता है ठीक है so that is impedance uh, matching concept in the absence of the auricular system and the tympanic membrane sound waves can still travel directly through the ear of the middle ear and enter the cochlea however the sensitivity for hearing will be 15 to 20 decibel less for the auricular transmission equivalent to a decrease from a medium to barely perceptible voice level so you won't be able to hear okay right the next concept that we have to talk about is uh, not too important but let's go through it attenuation of sound by a contraction of the tensor tympani and stapedius muscle when loud sounds are transmitted through the auricular system and from there into the central nervous system a reflex occur after a latent period of about 40 to 80 milliseconds to cause contraction of the stapedius muscle to a lesser extent also the tensor tympani muscle that is the tensor tympani muscle pulls the handle of the malleus inward while the stapedius muscle uh, is working to pull the stapes outward these two forces oppose each other and thereby causing the entire auricular system to develop increased rigidity so they are sara beauty sound traveling ka ye hai ki jo auricular system hai it is ding 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 hill rai it's oscillating it's vibrating lekin agar is system ko tight kar diya jaye ek taraf se tensor tympani muscle ek taraf se stapedius muscle isko rigid kar de khinch de then you are not in a position to uh, amplify the sound so this will greatly reduce the auricular conduction of low frequency sound kyunki ab amplification nahi ho rahi aur amplification nahi isliye ho rahi kyunki now these bones are, have been made very very rigid by the contraction of these two opposite muscles and now you cannot amplify the signal okay and therefore you are unable to listen anything uh, at this particular noise level this attenuation reflex can reduce the intensity of the lower frequency sound uh, by 30 to 40 decibels because you don't hear low frequency sound now because the system is rigid and you cannot amplify it the function of this mechanism is believed to be twofold number one to protect the cochlea from damaging vibration caused by excessive loud sound and to mask the low frequency sound in the loud environment taki aap low frequency sound ko chhod ke bigger sounds pe focus kar sake this is an important uh, mechanism that we do when we are present in a place jahan multiple sounds maujood hain another function of the tensor tympani and stapedius is to decrease a person's hearing sensitivity to her own speech this effect is activated by collateral nerve signal transmit won't be able to understand at the moment so just forget about it maine aapko chapter ke start mein bataya tha there will be things that we will be leaving they are not important for your exam they will not be asked and they will confuse you so it's a very good three good reasons to leave them and not to study then transmission of sound through the bone so you uh, i mean the brain is obviously present in the skull so there is a skull and here we have the brain inside and the processing center in the brain processes the sound waves through air but the bone can also transmit sound waves so that is an important thing that so agar ek tuning fork hila ke aap apne bones pe rakhenge you should able you will be able to appreciate that because the inner ear cochlea is embedded in a bony cavity in the temporal bone known as the bony labyrinth if you know the structure of the ear there is literally a bony labyrinth inside which there is a membranous labyrinth so um therefore under appropriate conditions a tuning fork or an electronic vibrator placed on any muni protuberance of the skull but especially on the mastoid processes uh, you will be able to hear that however the energy available even in loud sound in the air is not sufficient to cause the hearing via the bone because if you are only hitting the bone you are bypassing the uh, ossical system and therefore there will be no application and therefore you need very loud sounds to oscillate the cochlear stuff so that's how the whole story goes okay so let's now start talking about so that was the very basic the uh, intro type of thing ki sound waves aayengi to bearing membrane ko hit karengi bones ne move karna hai signal transmitted now a few words about cochlea although there will be a little more details but we need to be focused and we will be focused 
to make ourselves understand ke how does the whole system work rather than getting into the details of what is not important okay so let's first talk about some functional anatomy of cochlea iska matlab ye hai ki we are not going to study the relations ke cochlea ke upar kya hai niche kya hai but how cochlea works the cochlea is basically a system of coiled tubules aur wo liquid se bhara hua hai aur basically wo liquid jo hai vibrate jo sara oscillate karta hai vibrate karta hai और वहाँ से सारी गेम शुरू होती है सो so बेसिकली आपको ये पता होना चाहिए कि ट्यूबुलर अरेंजमेंट क्या है और यहाँ कौन से स्ट्रक्चर्स हैं जो वाइब्रेट करते हैं और डीपोलराइजेशन हाइपरपोलराइजेशन सारा गेम आपको पता है एक्साइटमेंट का यही है कि देयर इज अस्टूमुलस वो स्टूमुलस वाइब्रेशन हो सकता है वो स्टूमुलस कुछ हो सकता है न्यूरो हो सकता है एंड एट द एंड ऑफ द डे द सेल हैज़ सम आयोनिक मूवमेंट हेयर एंड देयर और इन मूवमेंट्स की वजह से सारा गेम स्टार्ट होता है नर्व कंडक्शन का ओके सो जो कॉकलिया है इट कंटेन्स थ्री क्वाइल ट्यूब साइड बाई साइड दे आर कॉल स्कैला वेस्टिबलाय स्कैला मीडिया एंड स्कैला चिम्पनाय और अगर इसको आप क्रॉस सेक्शन में देखते हैं तो इट रिपेयर समथिंग लाइक दिस सो दैट्स अ ट्यूब दैट्स अ ट्यूब दैट्स अ ट्यूब स्कैला मीडिया बिकॉज इट्स इन द मिडल वेस्टिबलाय एंड चिम्पनाय क्रॉस टू द चिम्पेनिक मेमरी क्लोज टू द वेस्टिबुल सो Uh, and then there are further structures so between scala vestibular and media for example there is a resinous membrane which is very thin and technically for many purposes they are considered a single chamber um and then we have scala tympani and uh, there are some very important structure we will talk about them in a minute organs of corti for example very very important structure and then this spiral ganglia or paired nerve ka exit so ye teen tubes aapko batane chahiye as for now aage par baat karte hain to baaki cheeze batata hu Now uh, we notice that the scala vestibuli and the scala media were separated by this resinous membrane. Ya bhi dikhaya tha maine aapko. And then the scala tympani and the scala media are separated by another membrane which is called the basal membrane. So scala media and scala tympani they have a membrane in between them which is known as a basal membrane. So ye do membranes aapko yaad honi chahiye. Basal membrane and resinous membrane. okay on the surface of the basilar membrane it's very important the basilar membrane the reason being ke uh, isme actually jo sensory organ hai hearing ke liye they are actually located there so on the surface of the basilar membrane uh, lies the organ of cortae which contains the series of electromechanically sensitive cells the hair cells they are the receptive organs that generate the nerve impulse so jitni bhi vibration ho rahi hai jo air mein pahunch rahi hai tympanic membrane and then the liquid is uh, moving around these are the cells here uh, which are the basic basic receptor cells for initiation of the nerve impulse okay so organs of cortae located in the basilar membrane then the next diagram uh, which shows the functional parts of the uncoiled cochlea for conduction of the sound vibration first note that the resonant membrane is missing from so basically if you look at this diagram now this diagram so here is the uh, stapes connected to the cochlear system and here they have shown the basilar membrane only and the basilar membrane ke upar wala jo part hai that is the combination of these two sections is called vestibular media yani yahan se membrane ko agar hata de to that becomes one single uh, you know कैबिनेट एक सिंगल कंपार्टमेंट बन गया एंड एज सुन एज द बोन अब इससे पीछे क्या होगा इनकस ने होना है मेलियस ने होना है और टेम्पेनिक मेम्ब्रेन ने होना है टेम्पेनिक मेम्ब्रेन पर साउंड वेव्स ने हिट किया ये सब कुछ हिला जुला यहाँ से वाइब्रेशन मूव कर रही है ना डिपेंडिंग अपॉन के कितना जोरदार मूवमेंट है लो फ्रिक्वेंसी है हाई फ्रिक्वेंसी है तो फिर यानी जैसे फॉर एग्जांपल जो लो फ्रीक्वेंसी साउंड्स होती हैं दे रीच वे अप देयर हाई फ्रीक्वेंसी जल्दी टर्मिनेट हो जाती हैं सो एंड देन द लिक्विड प्रेजेंट हेयर स्टार्ट्स ऑस्किलेटिंग एंड देन द बेजलर मेम्ब्रेन है द सेंसरी ऑर्गन्स ऑफ कॉर्टाए दे टेक अप द मैसेज एंड दिस इज हाउ इट वर्क ओके नाउ द साउंड वाइब्रेशन एंटर द स्कैला वेस्टिबुलाए From the face plate of the stapes, so stapes जो लगा हुआ ना basically वो scala vestibular ऊपर वाले area में ये sound vibrations पहले enter होती हैं okay that's the compartment which receives it because the stapes is attached to the oval window ठीक है and uh, inward movement causes the fluid to move forward scala vestibular and scala media outward movement causes the fluid to move backward so ये fluid की movement अंदर start हो गई now basilar membrane में जो आपको थोड़ी डिटेल इसलिए पता होनी चाहिए बिकॉज दैट द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट बेट यहाँ पे ऑर्गन ऑफ कॉटाई मौजूद है इट्स अ फाइबरस मेमरेन दैट सेपरेट द स्कैला मीडिया फ्रॉम स्कैला टेम्पेनाई इट कंटेन्स ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड टू थर्टी थाउजेंड बेजिलर फाइबर्स दैट प्रोजेक्ट फ्रॉम द बोनी सेंटर ऑफ द कॉकलिया एंड दीज आर नोन एज द मॉड्यूलस 
towards the outer wall. The fibers are stiff, elastic, reed-like structures, and the fixed on the basal ends in the central bony structure of the cochlea, but are not fixed at their distal end, so they are somewhat like cilia. Okay? The length of the basal layer fibers increase progressively, beginning at the oval window and going from the base uh, of the cochlea to the apex. So cochlea is moving like this. This diagram is where we are. Cochlea is moving like this. So there is a base and then there is an apex of the uh, cochlea. So the length of these cilia-like structure, it keeps on increasing. Okay? Increasing from a length of about 0.04 mm near the oval end, uh, the round windows, to 0.5. So look at the magnitude, 0.04 and 0.5. Uh, tip of cochlea tuck and tip of cochlea region is then known as Helicotroma region. Yahan pe bade bade cilia maujood hai. Kehne ki baat hi hai. Thik hai? The diameter of the fibers, however, decreases from the oval window to the helicotroma. So helicotroma ka word yaad rakhna hai. Tip of the cochlea. Thik hai? Uh, lambai mein lambe honge, lekin diameter kam hoga. As a result of stiff short fibers near the oval window um, of the cochlea, vibrate best at a very high frequency. Whereas the long limber uh, fibers near the tip of the cochlea vibrate best at low frequency. So, I mean, this is now the most important thing to remember. Okay, which type of sound waves goes where? So, for example, if there is a high pitch, high zordar kism ki sound, so that is well perceived by the short fibers because it's already very high uh, tone. But if there is a low sound, hai, so it goes all the way, it needs big uh, fibers which are present at the helicotrauma to receive the sound. Okay, so that's a very important concept to understand. Okay, high uh, you know, frequency wali sounds kahan soni jati hai, low wali kahan. Thus, the high frequency resonance of the basilar membrane occur near the base, whereas the low frequency near the tip. Or tip par kaun maujood hai bhai sab? Helicotrauma. Thik hai? Uh, not trauma. <laughs> trauma to ye hai ke bhai ye vaisa trauma to kar raha hai, hearing ke chapter. Uh, torture kar raha hai, lekin this is helicotrauma. Now, transmission of sound waves in the cochlea. When the foot of the step is moves inward against the oval window, uh, the round window must bulge outward. Look, this is a closed compartment. This is a closed compartment, so if the movement is inward here, so it expand not expand here. There are four bones here. So there is no way that this uh, liquid compartment can expand. So it's a way to diffuse the pressure in the way that it comes to the pressure in this round window and it will bulge a round window. So look at nature's system. There is a diffuse mechanism too. That if there is a garbage mechanism, the pressure is inside, then the pressure is also outside. Is that okay? So the uh, round window must bulge outward. Because the cochlea is bounded on all the sides by the bony walls. The initial effect of the sound wave entering the oval window is to cause the basal membrane at the base of the cochlea to bend in the direction of the round window. However, the elastic tension is built in the basal fibers. Here, all this written is that when sound waves here by the movement of the stapes, there is oscillation in the liquid. Depending on the frequency, if it's a high frequency sound, base wall fibers are activated. If it's a low frequency sound, later, helicopter trema while fibers are activated okay now vibration patterns of basal membrane for different sound frequencies now note in the figure 53 4 the different parts of the transmission of sound waves uh, ye, ye actually so that's the same diagram again so imagine this is again the cochlear system ye basal membrane hai aur ye upar wala ek compartment hai niche wala compartment hai exactly this diagram ka replica hai ye. you see upar scala vestibular and media or niche scala tympani now these are the sound waves which go peak and then diminish. To me, these are high frequency sound waves because they are best perceived by the base of the cochlea. These are middle frequency and this is high frequency. So all this paragraph tells you about the same story. Okay. Now, so this is important. I am highlighting that the high frequency sounds are best perceived in the beginning by the short cilia-like projections and low frequency sounds are perceived towards the helicotrema which has the larger uh, fibers okay right with this then vibration amplitude pattern of the basal membrane the dash curve so this is not important we just need to leave this bit and then comes the function of the organ of corti important because these are the main game players look at this diagram this is showing you try to uh, you know orient yourself what we are looking at okay so we are looking at the basal fibers okay basal membranes per te, and here we have different type of cells which are all very important jahan se dekhe inhi cells ke saath connected hai cochlear nerve jo message ko leke jayegi okay let's start talking about the function of the organ of corti 
It is the receptor organ that generate nerve impulse in response to the vibration of the basilar membrane. Note that the organs of cortile lies on the surface of the basilar fiber and the basilar membrane. The actual sensory receptor of the organ of cortile are two special type of nerve cells. They are called the hair cells. Um, and uh, a single row of internal hair cell, uh, which are about 3500 and measuring up to this much, not important for you to remember. And then three to four rows of the external hair cells, which are even more in number and they are smaller in size. The basis and size of the hair cells synapse with the network of the cochlear nerve ending. Between 90 to 95% of these endings terminate in the inner hair cell, emphasizing their special importance to detection of sound. So we have outer hair cells, we have inner hair cells, both component of the organs of cortile, and these are the main cells which receive the depolarization signal and then transmit it to the cochlear nerve. Okay. The nerve fibers stimulated by the hair cells lead to spiral ganglion of cortile, which lies in the modulus. The spiral ganglion neuronal cells send exons to a total of 30,000 to the cochlear nerve. So here somewhere would be the spiral ganglion, okay, which will then receive the information and then process it to the cochlear nerve. Easy stuff, hai, mushkil nahi hai. Excitation of the hair cell, node in figure 536, which is this one. Um, minute hairs or stereocilia project upward from the hair cells and they're embedded in the surface gel coating the tectorial membrane. So this is the cilia they are talking about. These are the cilia which are embedded in a gel, jelly-like, gel-like material and that is given a special name known as the tectorial membrane which lies above the stereocilia in the scala media. These hair cells are similar to the hair cells found in the macula and the crista and pilaris. There's in turn excites the ordinary nerve fiber synapse with their base so but basically ye hai ki ye sara liquid system jab vibrate karega these are the organs which are receiving this information okay now the mechanism whereby the vibration of the basal membrane excites the hair endings the outer end of the hair are fixed and tightly rigid structure composed of flat plate called the reticular lamina supported by the rods of corti which are attached to the basal fibers the basal fibers the rods of corti and the reticular lamina they move as rigid units now um these structural details hain. Uh, even if you want to remember basal fiber packages attached and there are rods of corti these are uh, projections and laminations of the basal fiber and they kind of harbor and they hold they are the holders for the hair cells which have cilia which is then projecting in the tectorial membrane okay now upward movement of the basal fiber rocks the reticular lamina upward and inward movement towards the modulus then when the basal membrane moves downward so uh, well i would leave that okay auditory signals are transmitted mainly by the inner hair cells so when i tell you there are inner hair cells and outer hair cells these are the ones which are critical even though there are three to four times as many outer hair cells as compared to two to three thousand inner hair cells but they are more important nonetheless if the outer cells are damaged while the inner cells remain fully functional a large amount of hearing is lost just both inner and outer are important that's fine okay i understand that now hair cell receptors uh action potentials basically excitation key so the stereocilia are stiff structures because each has a rigid protein framework each hair cell is about 100 stereocilia on its apical border these Stereocilia become progressively longer on the well, we, unnecessary detail, the tops of the short of the, 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 the. Now, depolarization opens up the voltage sensitive calcium channels and causes influx of calcium. That's important. Easy, you know, her cell may see depolarization. Or you see, when a stimulus, or a channel open, or a ion under enter, karta hai. repolarization of the hair cells occur mainly by exit of potassium. Uh, through the calcium ion sensitive potassium channel so calcium in depolarization potassium out repolarization thus when the basal fibers bend towards the scala vestibuli hair cells depolarize and in the opposite direction they hyperpolarize okay that's easy stuff now determination of the sound frequency the place principle not important determination of the loudness ye main bata chuka hu aapko ke jo high frequency sounds hain they are perceived near the base of the cochlea and low frequency sound towards the end that's all what it is acha 
अगर बहुत स्लो साउंड होती है सो देर इज अ प्रोसेस ऑफ स्पेशल समीशन अवेलेबल ओके सो इफ देर इज अ वेरी लो फ्रीक्वेंसी साउंड देन मल्टीपल सिग्नल्स आर एडिड अप दिस इज कॉल्ड समेशन एंड द डिटेक्शन ऑफ चेंजेस इन द लाउडनेस द पावर ऑफ लॉ अगेन नॉट इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू टू रिमेंबर डेसिबल यूनिट्स इज समथिंग विच इतना डिटेल में इन्होंने दिया नहीं बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक है बिकॉज ऑफ द एक्सट्रीम चेंजेस इन द साउंड इंटेंसिटीज दैट द एयर कैन डिटेक्ट एंड डिस्क्रिमिनेट साउंड इंटेंसिटीज आर यूजली एक्सप्रेस इन टर्म्स ऑफ लॉगरिदम ऑफ द एक्चुअल इंटेंसिटी सो बेसिकली इज अ लॉग ऑफ वॉट वी कैन एक्चुअली फील और हेयर अ टेन फोल्ड इंक्रीज इन साउंड एनर्जी इज कॉल्ड वन बेल सुने इस बात को टेन फोल्ड इंक्रीज इन द साउंड एनर्जी इज कॉल्ड वन बेल यानी इफ सम इंस्ट्रूमेंट इज इमिटिंग साउंड एट दिस लेवल एंड टेन फोल्ड इंक्रीज दिस इज कॉल्ड वन बेल और इस वन बेल का पॉइंट वन यानी टेंथ ऑफ दिस इज नॉन इज डेसी बेल सो ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड द डेफिनेशन ओके वन डेसी बेल रेप्रेजेंट एन एक्चुअल इंक्रीज इन साउंड एनर्जी ऑफ अबाउट वन पॉइंट टू सिक्स टाइम्स सो दैट इज नॉट एन इंपॉर्टेंट नंबर बट द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ वॉट इज अ बेल एंड वॉट इज अ डेसी बेल इज इंपॉर्टेंट राइट threshold for hearing sound at different frequencies um the figure demonstrates that 3000 cycles per second sound can be heard even when its intensity is as low as 70 decibel uh at this particular pressure conversely a 100 cycle per second sound can be detected only if the intensity is 10 times higher so basically uh, what you can actually hear is Uh, depending on a couple of things number 1 what is the hertz uh, value you know what is the cycle what is the frequency if the frequency is high you need low decibel power to hear this if the frequency is low you need high power to hear this that's a simple concept i mean forget about the numbers they're not going to test you in exam about these numbers but the concept okay now frequency range of hearing the frequencies of sound that a young person can hear between 20 to 20000 hertz or cycle per second however referring again we see that the sound range depends to great extent on the loudness as well if there is a sound of 20 hertz it has to be very loud so that we can hear it and if there is a sound of 20000 hertz it can be low loud and we can still hear it okay so that's it basically so we will now talk about the central processing mechanisms now that we have understood ke sound waves jab external air se hote hue middle ear mein jo sara system change karti hain and then in the inner ear how they are processed the organ of corti and everything now we are assuming that the sound waves and the message is basically going to be delivered to the central nervous system so that's what we have to discuss now central auditory mechanisms ऑडिटरी नर्वस सिस्टम पाथवेज आपको याद होने चाहिए और लेट मी टेल यू एट द वेरी बिगनिंग ऑफ दिस सेक्शन के वी डोंट नो मच अबाउट हाउ द साउंड वेव्स आर एक्चुअली प्रोसेस्ड एंड आई एम वेरी श्योर इन सेइंग दिस बिकॉज आई मीन ब्रेन इज ब्यूटिफुल बट वी डोंट अंडरस्टैंड हाउ इट वर्क्स दैट्स द मेजर फिनोमिना एंड इफ वी डोंट एग्री टू दिस आई मीन वी डू अंडरस्टैंड समथिंग सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल वी नो वट एरिया इज एसोसिएटेड विद ऑडिटरी प्रोसेसिंग वी नो वट एरिया इज एसोसिएटेड विद विजुअल प्रोसेसिंग बट टू बी ऑनेस्ट वी डोंट अंडरस्टैंड एग्जैक्टली हाउ डज दैर हैपन वी हैव सम प्रिलिमरी अंडरस्टैंडिंग बट दैट्स टू कॉम्प्लेक्स ऑफ एन ऑर्गन फॉर एस टू अंडरस्टैंड बेसिकली जब मैं कहता हूँ तो इसमें मुझे काफी रेजिस्टेंस मिलती है बट दैट्स द ट्रूथ एंड आई एम कन्विंस्ड एनी वेज विल टॉक अबाउट दी ऑडिटरी पाथवे विच इज डिपेक्टेड इन दिस इमेज एंड विल हैव अ लुक एट द इमेज इन अ मोमेंट सो दिस पर्टिकुलर डायग्राम इज अ गुड वन विच स्टार्ट फ्रॉम दी खॉकलियर एंड देन द सिग्नल गोज टू दी सेंट्रल नर्वस सिस्टम सो लेट्स स्टार्ट रीडिंग अबाउट इट देन विल हैव अ लुक it shows the major auditory pathways nerve fibers from the spiral ganglion of the corti enter the dorsal ventral cochlear nuclei located in the upper part of the medulla so here they enter they enter in the upper part of the medulla and from the medulla what happens then at this point all the fibers synapse and second order neurons pass mainly to the opposite side of the brain stem to terminate in the superior olivary nucleus so get a track of it so all these fibers are synapsing here then they are crossing to the opposite side and then they are moving 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 and going where they are going to the superior olivary nucleus a few second order fibers also pass to the superior olivary nucleus of the same side so that's an important thing they do cross so fibers second order neuron ke yahan se cross bhi kar rahe hain they're going to the superior olivary nucleus and they are also going on the same side so they're going on the same side 
actually not this one so this one for example so they are synapsing in the superior olivary nucleus of the same side most of them of the contralateral side okay from the superior olivary nucleus up kya hota hai? the auditory pathway passes upward through the lateral lemniscus some of the fibers in the nucleus of the lateral lemniscus they terminate in the nucleus of the lateral lemniscus but many fibers bypass this nucleus and travel on the inferior colliculus where all or more almost all of these auditory fibers synapse so they are now going to the inferior uh, colliculus and they are basically traveling up okay and that's in a lemniscal pattern so they are making a particular layer of all the fibers coming from the air and from there they are then going to travel further upward from there the pathways pass to the medial geniculate nucleus you see the medial geniculate nucleus in the midbrain here they synapse here from here they go to the primary auditory cortex so that's the pathway and you must remember this pathway okay okay cochlear nerve mein jab signal aa gaya to wo kaise opposite side pe ja raha hai from the medulla then traveling upward and that's the very simplistic presentation of what is happening uh, there is obviously much more convoluted pathways than this jaise maine visual system mein bataya tha ki jo auditory pathway hai wo bhi it is also connected to various different parts of the brain by various pathways because aap awaaz सिर्फ सुनते नहीं है यू ऑल्सो ट्राई टू रिलेट आवाज विद इमोशंस आपको बाज आवाजें अच्छी लगती हैं बाज आवाजें बुरी लगती हैं बाज आवाजें सुरीली लगती हैं बाज आवाजों से आपको किसी की याद आती है वो ये दिमाग में सारे कनेक्शंस हैं कि जैसे ही आपका ब्रेन किसी एक पर्टिकुलर आवाज को प्रोसेस करता है फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू हैड अ लवली रिलेशन विद समबरी एंड नाव यू डोंट हैव दैट पर्सन क्लोज टू यू मे बी द पर्सन इज अब्रॉड और गॉड फॉर बेट द पर्सन इज डैट और समथिंग लाइक दैट बट इफ यू हेयर समबरी विद अ वेरी सिमिलर वॉइस तो आपको उस आवाज को सुन के उस बंदे की याद आएगी सो so, आपका आवाज प्रोसेसिंग सेंटर आपके यादाश के सेंटर से भी कनेक्टेड है दैट सॉर्ट ऑफ स्टाफ ओके नाउ सेवरल इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स शुड बी नोटेड फर्स्ट सिग्नल्स फ्रॉम बोथ द ईयर्स आर ट्रांसमिटेड टू द पाथवेज ऑफ बोथ साइड्स ऑफ द ब्रेन सो इट्स नॉट वेरी स्पेसिफिक ये आइज की तरह है ना आइज में भी आपको याद है ना नेजल फाइबर्स टेम्पोरल फाइबर्स एंड विद प्रीपोर्डेंस ऑफ ट्रांसमिशन ऑन द कंट्रोलेटर पाथवे ज्यादातर हमारा ये जो कान है वो अपोजिट साइड पर प्रोसेस होता है बट बोथ साइड पर हो रहा होता है ये बात पता होनी चाहिए in at least three places in the brain crossing over occurs between the two pathways of the right and left side in the trapezoid body in the commissure between the lateral lemniscae ke do nucleus and in the commissure connecting the two inferior collicula yahan pe cross over hota hai dono sides ke pathway ka second thing which you have to remember that many collateral fibers from auditory tract passes directly to the reticular activating system of the brain actually not only this part of the brain but to many other parts of the brain as well and third thing that you have to remember is that a high degree of spatial orientation is maintained in the fiber tracts from the cochlea all the way to the cortex in fact there are three spatial patterns for termination of different sound frequencies स्पेशल पैटर्न का मतलब ये होता है कि लो साउंड फ्रीक्वेंसी मिडिल साउंड फ्रीक्वेंसी हाई साउंड इनके अलग अलग रिकॉग्निशन सिस्टम मौजूद हैं ओके वी डोंट एग्जैक्टली नो के हाउ डज दिस वर्क मैं बार बार ये कह रहा हूँ बट दिस हैपन्स ओके यू आर एबल टू डिफ्रेंशिएट बिटवीन लो पेज हाई पेज मिडल पेज थिंग्स लाइक दैट नो फंक्शन ऑफ द सर्बल कॉटेक्स इन हियरिंग obviously the primary auditory cortex is in the uh, cerebral hemisphere the projection area of the signals to the cerebral cortex is shown in figure 5310 so that's the uh, auditory cortex showing you the auditory cortex the primary area and then the association area which demonstrates that the auditory cortex lies principally on the supratemporal plane of the superior temporal gyrus don't ask me what these things are anatomy ki meri videos nahi dekhi kya but also extend onto the lateral side of the temporal lobe over much of the insular cortex so if you know the anatomy you know where it is two separate subdivisions are shown in the primary auditory cortex and the auditory association cortex so primary area or secondary area basically secondary area ko hum association cortex bhi kehte hain the primary auditory cortex is directly excited by projections from the medial geniculate body where is the so i mean that's which pathway goes where is written here sound frequency perception in the primary auditory cortex at least six tonotopic maps have been described in the primary cortex area in each of these maps high frequency sounds excite neurons at one end of the map whereas low frequency so kehne ka matlab ye hai ki different tones and different frequencies of different noises and voices and sounds can be appreciated in the primary cortex area how we exactly don't know okay and because we exactly don't know um, most of the 
text here is just philosophical. Why does the auditory cortex have so many different tonotopic maps? The answer presumably is that each of the separate area dissect out some specific feature of the sound. For example, one of the large maps in the primary auditory cortex almost certainly discriminates the sound frequencies and gives the person psychic sensation of sound pitches. So we have different areas basically. Every thing is that in the primary cortex area, we have different areas to identify different tones of the voice. The frequency range to which an individual neuron in the auditory cortex responds is much narrower than that in the... So irrelevant stuff, guys. Just leave it out, okay? Trust me. Now, discrimination of sound patterns by the auditory cortex. Complete bilateral removal of the auditory cortex. If you remove the auditory cortex, such as in experimental animals, obviously cats or monkeys, um, then what will happen? It does greatly reduce or sometimes even abolish the animal's ability to discriminate the different sound pitches, which means the patterns of the sounds are obviously. So, now tell me this. ये कौन सी मुश्किल चीज है जो यहां लिखी हुई है ऑब्वियसली अगर प्राइमरी कॉर्टेक्स एरिया निकाल दोगे तो बंदा नहीं अप्रिशिएट कर पाएगा साउंड वेव्स को ना उसको पे पूरा पैराग्राफ लिखा हुआ है टेंशन दी हुई बच्चों को नाउ डिटरमिनेशन ऑफ द डायरेक्शन फ्रॉम व्हिच द साउंड इज कमिंग नाउ जस्ट लाइक योर ब्यूटीफुल आईज यू हैव अ वेरी गुड सेंस ऑफ इफ समथिंग इज फार अवे फ्रॉम यू सच एज द मून और इफ समथिंग इज वेरी क्लोज टू यू सच एज अ पर्सन आप डेप्थ और डिस्टेंस Uh, gauge kar sakte hain by using your optic nerve similarly a person determines the horizontal direction from which the sound comes by two principles the time lag between the entry of the sound in one ear and its entry into the opposite ear so agar ek banda khada hua hai uska ek kaan idhar hai dusra kaan idhar hai so the two systems are able to differentiate ki sound kis direction se horizontally aa rahi hai from the right side or from the left side okay and the second is the difference between the intensities of the sound in the two ears obviously jo yahan kareeb khade ho ke agar koi aapke cheekhega to is kaan mein jaye is kaan mein awaaz jayegi you know ki direction ye hai yahan awaaz us tarah nahi jayegi okay the first mechanism function best at well ab ye details you don't have to remember okay the two mechanism cannot tell whether the sound is emanating from in front or behind the person or from above or below <laughs> the discrimination is achieved mainly by the pinna which act as a funnel which direct the sound come on yaar ye aasan si cheez ko mushkil karne wali baat hai obviously if the person is standing like this if this is one ear this is the other ear if somebody is uh, releasing any sound from there you are able to identify from where the sound is coming obviously your primary cortex area is um, powerful enough to distinguish the direction okay more than that we don't know by the way we don't know how does that work okay neural mechanisms for detecting sound direction destruction of the auditory cortex obviously in the experimental animals on both sides of the brain causes loss of almost all the ability to detect the direction ab yahan phir ye mujhe ye bata rahe hain ki primary auditory cortex sound ki direction determine karne mein important hai simple concept okay the mechanism is believed to be the following the superior auditory nucleus is divided into two um, well all hypotheses it's believed to be the following we don't know we don't know how does it work okay so you don't have to worry about this paragraph as well there's a special pattern of neuronal stimulation develops in the medial superior auditory nucleus with sound that no again we're gonna leave this one okay so sound has a direction we know that and that's all these paragraphs are saying now um types of deafness is something important deafness is usually divided into two particular type that caused by the impairment of the cochlea and the auditory nerve on the central nervous system and it is usually classified as nerve deafness because there is some problem with either the processing of the sound waves or the auditory nerve so nervous issue hai koi nerve deafness that caused by the impairment of the physical structure of the ear that conduct the sound is known as the conduction deafness so for example if this is external ear and the, there is a tumor or something which is impeding Uh, you know the transfer of sound to the nervous component this is what is known as conduction problem okay audiometer to determine the nature of the hearing disability an audiometer is a device which is used the instrument is an earphone connected to electronic oscillator capable of emitting pure tones ranging from low frequencies to high frequencies and is calibrated to zero intensity level or a calibrated volume control can increase the loudness above zero level if the loudness must be increased to 30 decibel um, above the normal before it can be heard that the person has lost about 30 decibel of hearing capacity so we use audiogram for measuring hearing 
problems okay that's the word that you should know right now audiogram in nerve deafness in nerve deafness which include damage to the cochlea or the nerve or the central nervous system uh, the person has loss of ability to hear the sounds as tested by both air conduction and bone conduction so if you Obviously, I mean, मसला क्या है मसला ये है कि उसका ये वाला सिस्टम कंडक्शन वाला सारा सही है यहाँ प्रॉब्लम है तो अब आप बोन से उसको मेजर करें या एयर कंडक्शन मेजर करें यहाँ आगे सिस्टम ही ब्लॉक है ना जब ये सिस्टम ही ब्लॉक होगा तो दोनों तरह से बंदा सुन नहीं सकेगा एयर कंडक्शन में भी बिलो नॉर्मल एंड बोन कंडक्शन में भी बिलो नॉर्मल हालांकि आप दूसरी कंडीशन में देखेंगे जहाँ कंडक्शन का प्रॉब्लम है तो एयर कंडक्शन में मसला आ रहा है लेकिन बोन कंडक्शन ठीक है क्योंकि यहाँ कंडक्शन का प्रॉब्लम है ओके सो दैस अ सिंपल सिंपल थिंग so that concludes this chapter we will next talk about the next special sense which is the sense of taste and smell so stay tuned all the very best my name is professor asif qureshi and you are watching dr asif lectures